Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Darn it. Um, so uh, I guess for recording purposes, I should say that I forgot to hit record. So you're entering into this talk midway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so. Uh, Yao Min, like I said, is traditionally an officer in the U.S. Navy uh, who works as a clerk. Uh, there's someone who helped other officers get their stuff done. So in this case, uh, Yao Min, the generator, helps us uh, kickstart new projects. It's a really awesome way of uh, basically spinning up a scaffolding site, a startup site from scratch, uh, or a theme. Uh, I've used it. I use it regularly to create uh, local environments using a plugin or a generator called uh, Generator Vamped, V A M P. It's, uh, it's a way of creating a vagrant environment to dev on locally. Uh, really recommend it. <coughs> the, uh, well, I'm one of the maintainers on that project. Um, another one that I recommend and use pretty regularly is uh, Generator Drupal Theme. It's maintained by I'm Carico from Four Kitchens. Um, it's a Yaman generator for creating themes. It helps you create uh, custom themes, sub-themes, uh, and really emphasizes uh, some of the uh, developers themes like Zen Omega, Aurora, and Mothership, some of the more popular uh, themes available out there. Um, it's pretty awesome because uh, it downloads a lot of the tools that I'm going to talk about. Um, you have the option to download Bower with it, Grunt or Gulp or both. Um, it uh, then uh, goes in, does a bundle install for you, installs all the needed libraries automatically, downloads all the needed scaffolding for your theme, so your .info file, your SAS directory, image directory, which you define. Um, and uh, then at the end, starts your compile. So I just created a, uh, a small video that demonstrates uh, how easy it is. Once installed, you just type yo Drupal theme, and it starts going through this process of uh, questions. What do you want to call your theme? Is it a sub-theme, and if so, of what? I said custom, and it's a sub-theme of bear. Um, do you want to customize your directories? And it walks you through all your directories with defaults that enter in uh, if you just hit enter. Um, then you get a checklist in the command line where you can select grunt or gulp or bower, and it makes only a few assumptions uh, questioning you on most of the uh, the not so uh, the <laughs> the questions that you shouldn't assume um, <clears throat> people need. It then goes through, goes out into the into the world, into the internet realm, and finds. Uh, the correct plugins for you, running your bundle install, bundle update, uh, Bower install, Bower update, um, and uh, I think, oh, it's not going to loop. OK. Uh, then uh, at the end, you're left with a directory with your SAS, your bundle uh, config file ready to go, um, your Bower config file, your package dot uh, json file um, and the sort uh, let's see. Oh. so now I'd like to uh, quickly go over grunt again I'm just uh, doing a brief introduction of these tools uh, you know with the idea of you going out and exploring it further but if you have questions you know, I'm not against you interrupting me. <laughs> uh, so Grunt. Um, Grunt is actually, has actually become my tool of choice. And it's because I deal with very large uh, sites. And I have found 
and I have seen in issue queues where people uh, with large uh, uh, SAS, a large SAS partial uh, structure uh, run into issues with uh, Gulp dealing with things like sprites. And it actually takes me on Colorado.com three times the amount of, uh, three times as long to compile my SAS as it does with Grunt. But Gulp also is awesome at running parallel tasks and is great with the script minification the linting process um, and a lot of the tests. So it's that's why you find so many people uh, arguing over which is better. It's because you know each one is good at different things. Um, <clears throat> so why use a task runner? Uh, well, in one word, automation. The less work you have to do when performing these tasks, like minification compilation, unit testing, linting, uh, the easier, uh, you know, our job becomes. And after you've configured it, you really don't have to go back too often to deal with it again. Uh, one thing Grunt has going for it are options, which are both a plus and a negative. Uh, it has a larger community um, than the Gulp community. It has as of yesterday, 4,430 registered plugins. Um, and it can automate just about it, anything except for, uh, you know, checking the status of your coffee pot in the morning uh, to see if, you know, so-and-so didn't fill it up when he was done getting his cup. Um, sorry, no animosity there, right? Uh, <laughs> So I once again created a small video uh, just so we could go over what the code looks like. Grunt uses a lot more JSON. It's a JavaScript-based uh, tool, but um, the, and I realize that's pretty small and hopefully it gets larger, but again, you can follow along on um, slides.com as we go. Uh, so here you see uh, various um, definitions being called out at the beginning of your script. Uh, you tell it if you want to utilize to that, what tools you want to utilize and um, start defining your tasks. So in this part, this section of the code, I'm defining a watch task, a connect task, test, a destination and an open and clean tasks. Each of these tasks in him are defining uh, things like we're going to lint, we're going to copy files from one directory to another. Like if you want an, an original image directory and a minified image directory, you can do that here. So it copies the file over to your, your minified image directory, then minifies it for you and uh, you get a m much better, smaller image to feed out to your end users. Um, we then can define uh, minified HTML, which on Colorado.com we actually use Varnish to deal with that. Uh, we then uh, can define uh, concurrent tasks, so tasks we want to run in parallel. So in this case, we want to run Compass with SVG minification um, and dealing with some of the sprites. Uh, then we uh, go through and we call grunt register task and dot task run. Uh, those are just some of the only JavaScript functions you have to deal with when writing this file. So as you can see, it's really not for everything that it's doing, it's really not that large a file. It's, this file is roughly 400 lines of code, but when you use that Yaoman generator that I am Carico created, it comes with most of this functionality built in. You just have to go through it and make sure your direct directory structure is accurate to your project. And there's uh, even better, um, uh, uh, 
ways you could optimize the Drupal code use, utilizing these tools. Um, so here I'm just going over, uh, just showing you what it's like in real time. So it'll even refresh your web page for you. So you don't have to do the whole command control R thing, <laughs> um, just because I'm that lazy. Uh, <laughs> but um, on Colorado.com, I was able to point Grunt to uh, my contrib module directories, and it went through, created a .min.js file, does a lint for you, so that you can see, you know, uh, if the people who generated that contrib module actually uh, followed best practices. It, it will even run Casper or uh, Jasmine or Q unit on that for you. And then with just a small snippet of code, uh, PHP code in a JS alter, you could say, if a minified file exists in this directory, use that. Don't use the uh, large file and concatenate it in this order. Um, and I found that that task alone really helped with page load, cutting it by in half. I would say I, it took it from, well, not in half. Uh, I take that back, by 25%. It cut a typical page load from four seconds to three alone. Uh, highly recommend that. Uh, if you need to, there's an excellent blog. I forget the site off the top of my head, but Google will point you there. <laughs> or, uh, you know, DuckDuckGo duck, duck, or whatever. Um, and uh, where he, he uh, actually talks about best, the best way to deal with that, um, uh, uh, that process of finding the minified JS. And I'm happy to create a gist if, uh, if anyone needs that code. Um, I haven't actually blogged about it because time and three kids and I complain a lot. I need to stop that. Um, all right, so Gulp. Uh, the, as I've said, Gulp is a lot faster at some of the functionality, actually most of the functionality. The only issue I've had with it is SAS. And since my front end devs and I all work primarily on SAS when doing regular maintenance, uh, we decided to go with Grunt because of the speed issue. Um, it just performed way better uh, when dealing with things like sprites. But the reason why Gulp is faster at most tasks is because it uses streams and pipes, which allows it to do all of its processes in parallel. It also comes with a lot of our basic tasks built in. So you're not having to go out and find the plugins you're gonna need necessarily, like a SAS plugin to get your, uh, your tasks done. It also is relatively easy. It's JavaScript, uh, which I know scares some people, but um, it, it's JavaScript, but only, the only functions you really need to know are gulp.task, .run, .watch, .source, and dot destination. So five tasks, not like jQuery. <laughs> and uh, relatively easy to learn uh, and straightforward. Um, so it's a newer uh, Node.js based task runner with, but it only has uh, 1,401, which is about 33% uh, of the uh, plugins that you'll find with Grunt. Uh, but as I said, it uses streams uh, that pipe your files through a series of actions uh, rather than going through it sequentially. But with Grunt, there is a plugin for that <laughs> so that you could run parallel tasks. I believe it's just called Grunt Parallel. Um, let's see, where's my pointer? So once again, I'm gonna go over some of the structure here. I find Gulp pretty intuitive in that you can define a lot of your tasks in separate files. You can do the same with, uh, did I say Grunt? Uh, with Grunt, but uh, Gulp just is a lot better at dealing with it. Uh, the uh, creators really thought that through and 
being that I come from a large SAS world where I'm used to a ton of partials, this just is more intuitive for me uh, because you can partialize your uh, JS files in the same way. So I'm just gonna go through the build.js file here. Uh, at the very beginning, you define your de dependencies. It then goes through just like with Grunt and you start defining your tasks. So your first, your first parameter in your task is the uh, definition or the name of the task itself. So that would be the name you type in when you run the command. So in this case, it'd be gulp watch in the command line. And what that would do is just like compass watch or bundle exec compass watch, um, it goes through and uh, starts watching not only your SAS, it also watches changes in your JS so that when you click save on your JS, it will go out and run uh, your JS tasks, your JS based tasks like linting, like Casper, or anything else you want it to do. Uh, minification, for example. Uh, we, uh, by default, point our JS files in our theme, whether it be in our hooks or in the .info file itself, we point it to the minified version. So it's important for my devs to, to use the uh, .watch function while they dev uh, because you know, the minified code won't get updated otherwise when you are uh, developing on your non-minified code. So kind of cool functionality here. I typed in grunt serve. It started up my local dev environment and booted, well, in this case, my local dev was already started and, and opened my, bra my default browser. So it opened index.html in my local browser. So I didn't have to go to the URL and type local host, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, and here I'm just giving an example of uh, what happens with uh, live reload again. Um, again, uh, even with this super basic SAS structure, I'll uh, highlight the amount of time that it took for the SAS to compile. And uh, if you go back, and look, I'm sure everyone missed it in the gulp video. <laughs> maybe not, maybe you saw me do it. But um, this actually did take three times the amount of time for it to compile. And that's just based off of the, uh, the core functionality of gulp uh, with SAS. Um, now there's uh, plugins out there that will help expedite that. But again, I've, I haven't had any luck in dealing with a site that has just a ton of SAS files out there that it has to go through and monitor. Um, <clears throat> and, and then I'm also showing uh, the, the linting process and the output of the uh, code to my console showing me which lines I screwed up on and uh, what the error is. So I don't have to go to my console on my browser and see, oh, well, this variable was not defined. I forgot to put, pass in this parameter to this function. I actually see that in the location where my watch is happening. Um, and it's outputted directly in blue text, so it pops out to me. <laughs> Pretty sweet and highly recommended. <clears throat> so next, I wanna briefly cover Bauer. I'm sure um, most people here have worked with Bauer. Um, if not, you definitely should check it out. It's a great tool for fetching and installing libraries so that you don't have to go out to Google, type in a library you know already exists, let's say Slick, Slick.js. You could come to Bauer and do just a simple Bauer install or you could even go out and find in your, uh, your console whether or not Bauer has a plugin for that library. Uh, so in one command, you can, uh, or one or two, because in which if you don't know if that library actually exists in the Bauer environment, um, you can have that library installed 
and ready for you to use. Um, it also is a great tool, which is why it's popular, a great tool for uh, updating your already installed dependencies. So just like with NPM, you have a Bower JSON file where you define the libraries you want to use and you define the location you want them to go to. So you could, you could place them in, let's say, a directory up to levels in one that might be called, I don't know, libraries? <laughs> and and uh, you can place those li these libraries in your library structure so that uh, you, know, uh, you then can just uh, use uh, the library commands to call it. Um, so here I'm just showing an example where I see, I, I typed in a command to find out if a update is available for any of my Bower dependencies. And it went out, looked, found one for, I believe it was North. I was able to then update North to the version I wanted because it asked me which version I wanted. <laughs> and um, and uh, have that install that for me. I then said, okay, I want the latest, greatest jQuery because I'm on the cutting edge. And I typed in jQuery install and went through and installed that for me as well. And it did it pretty quickly considering the size of jQuery. Uh, brings in the minified version and the non-minified version. Uh, then. I said, you know what, actually jQuery 2.0 didn't play nicely with my uh, admin pages, let's say. So I don't really want it anymore. So I just put in uh, a command, Bower uninstall, and it uninstalled it for me. Um, so again, another very useful tool. Uh, dash dash save. Um, that's just like with NPM. I don't know if you've uh, done that before. It's a great way of having it saved to your .json file automatically. Um, so it not only saved it there, it defined the version I was saving um, just by typing in dash dash save. So I didn't have to go out and find, how do I do that again? And, and put that in. I, I was actually able to just uh, type that in. So you could actually do that with NPM as well, uh, which it's a pretty badass way of dealing with it. And if you put in like a dev parameter there, it will actually put it in your dev dependencies as opposed to your distribution or production dependencies. So uh, check that out. It uninstalled it all together. Yeah, exactly. So, oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so she asked if it uninstalled the plugin altogether when I did Bower uninstall. So I assume uh, by that you mean took it out of the JSON file. And when I defined my version, I was able to it put the correct version in there for me as well. Does that make sense? So now I, I want to focus on some of the testing tools I use. Uh, my two favorites, personally, are Selenium and Casper. Uh, Selenium, because there is a Firefox extension for it that will record your actions as you're going through the page. It will uh, record that to a Ruby file, which, you know, for me, Ruby is a whole other animal I've dealt with it in the past, but it's something I don't like to touch very often because of my comfort level. I, I shouldn't say I don't like to because I like that stuff, but. Um, and then Casper's just straight JS. Um, so here I'm going to just do an example of Casper. Um, this is a testing tool that allows you to test your front end without actually having to touch the browser. So in this case, it doesn't bring up your default browser when testing. It doesn't bring up uh, your, uh, you know, uh, 
Firefox, Chrome, and Safari, and Internet Explorer. It actually goes in and ha uh, utilizes, uh, what's it? Is it Phantom, I think. Sorry, it's not coming to me right now. Uh, the name of uh, the console-based uh, browser and goes in and tests tests your front end for you. So what it's doing is it's going through a browser environment and clicking on elements that you define within a test uh, environment. Is, does anyone in here actually use a testing structure like this? We use RAID. Sorry, RAID? We use RAID. Oh, RAID. Which I was actually going to ask Uh, I find there's not much of a difference. I find if you've worked on one, you could easily transition to the other. Um, uh, I, I was introduced to uh, Casper by uh, uh, a guy named, uh, he goes by Rupel on DDoTO and on um, Twitter. He works for Four Kitchens. He has an awesome blog out there on dealing with Casper and Drupal. And so based off that, I started experimenting with Casper and made my transition from Selenium to Casper. I've also you know, played with Jasmine and played with QUnit. There was a good talk in Austin on QUnit. If that's something you're interested in, that's maintained by the jQuery folks. Um, but it's really heavy. Just like a lot of their stuff. Um, uh, but Casper is really easy and intuitive for me to jump on. Yeah, go ahead. Panda is just a headless web browser, whereas Casper is a, has the is a testing framework around Panda. Yeah, all right, thank you. Um, and as you can see, again, it's more of a JavaScript-based uh, environment for um, uh, uh, running your tests. If you're not testing, um, you really should. Uh, really recommend it. It really helps you problem solve in the end. Um, you don't have to go through necessarily and make sure an element is getting rendered out to the page in the correct location and uh, if you click on it that you know another element is toggling for you or uh, or if you hover over it, uh, something is displayed. Let's see, where's my cursor? So uh, again, here's the link. Uh, you'll find it on my slides. You could try and copy it now. Uh, but it's on uh, the forward.forkitchens.com. Great resource uh, writ written by uh, Rupel, uh, Chris Rupel. Uh, he, he also works on, i uh, made note of the pre-module, so uh, that's preloading your links uh, for you, uh, fast and fast click, sorry, and uh, uh, the web components module. He's pretty badass. So uh, next I'd like to cover just uh, a couple um, performance tools. I use uh, PageSpeed Insights and uh, webpagetest.org a lot. Uh, both tools are really good at giving you hints as to how you can speed up your, your, uh, your site, whether it be uh, optimizing your images, uh, minifying your JS, etc. Um, worth going out and checking out, super easy to use. You type in your URL, and uh, in fact, PageSpeed Insights, it's developed by Google, um, has a Chrome plugin. So you could do it right there in your browser. It will go in, find your uh, weaknesses and reasons why your performance might not be as optimized as you'd like, and uh, so that you can quickly and easily uh, optimize the structure. Uh, a couple of resources that I'd like to just cover. These resources really help me in learning, and I think would you, uh, if you have the time to go through and do this, uh, will you'll really benefit from it. Ilya uh, Grigoric is a developer with Google. 
<clears throat> um, if anything, you should follow him on Google Plus if you use that or Twitter. Um, his uh, just knowledge of performance is incredible. And um, this book that uh, he wrote, I think about a year ago, on browser networking is uh, very well done and uh, talks about how you can uh, break the, the one second uh, 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 mobile page load barrier um, that I'm Carrico is always talking about. <laughs> um, uh, so highly recommend this book. Uh, so, uh, he also gives a talk, I, I want to say it was at the front end conference called uh, Breaking the 1,000 one Millisecond Time Barrier, uh, Mobile Barrier, and um, it's on YouTube. Um, in it, the three main um, uh, points I got was just making, having the user's browser make one request to the server if possible. <laughs> I know in the Drupal world that's really hard to do. Um, uh, inline the most important code so that it renders to the screen faster and uh, defer your rests. Um, I'm trying to recall what he means by that but I, I believe it's uh, defer deferring your calls to your services. Another great book, a great resource that I refer to probably once a month, uh, way more than my other Drupal uh, resources outside of uh, Google, uh, <laughs> is uh, High Performance Drupal. Um, it's a quote, comprehensive guide that provides uh, best practices, examples, and explanations for solving a lot of the performance and scalability issues we deal with with Drupal. It's focused obviously on Drupal and something uh, that I have pointed all my network guys to and they've benefited from it as well, even with uh, just fine tuning our varnish system or uh, uh, dealing with our load balancers, things like that. These are a list of very handy modules. I'm gonna just uh, point you to a couple that are super easy to implement. Um, one being Speedy. Uh, what Speedy? It's Speedy is really heavy, which is uh, maybe its downfall for some people uh, because it it minifies all of Core's JS for you, and um, you download that to your contrib modules directory. And it maintains uh, uh, the uh, minified versions of the JS for past Drupal versions. So you're actually pulling in a ton of scripts, right? But once you pull that in, get it in your Git structure, you don't have to deal with that anymore, I found. And, and so for me, that's not as much of a hindrance. It, you know, because Git just updates the, the scripts it needs to. Um, so then you're dealing with it on a more of a, a directory new directory structure or new file structure uh, basis. Um, and to set it up, it's just a checkbox in uh, your what admin uh, performance page. Um, and I use purge to deal with varnish, uh, purging cache on varnish with um, the expire module, cache expire. <laughs> What that does is it allows me to clear or purge varnish cache for a page that's updated, a user that's updated, a general entity that's updated. Um, and you could define when you want that to happen at a very fine scale. So by purge, I mean uh, clear the cache for that one entity so that it shows up maybe right away within my varnish structure once it's published. Um, Pretty cool. Uh, and uh, Varnish module is very handy as well if you're working with uh, Varnish 3.x or 2.x. We're on 4.x, so I, I actually deal more with just uh, my caching headers um, because uh, 4.x just seems uh, easy enough where I don't really need 
to deal too much with purging on uh, CCL, dress CCL. Uh, oh, and uh, another one listed there, uh, which again is semi-controversial, was Cash Views Bully, or Views Cash Bully. Let's go back. Uh, yeah, Views Cash Bully. What that does is it says, I want all my views cached. And um, even if the uh, dev didn't check that box saying that it should be cached, it's like, well, for performance reasons, I don't want to deal with that mistake every time a dev doesn't want it or doesn't check that box. Uh, just uh, forcing them to uh, use best practices in dealing with performance. Uh, again, uh, highly recommended. One I use on a very uh, a site that gets a lot of traffic. And finally, I included some resources here uh, for dealing with performance optimization. I don't expect you to write all these down um, because they're on my slides, which you can find here. Uh, Slides.com slash Rye McVeigh slash deck. Tried to make it semi-easy, didn't use Bitly, <laughs> but there you go. Again, there's my contact information and uh, the link for uh, feedback please reach out to me. This was very broad, uh, very basic. I'm happy to help you out. Happy to create some gists if you want to see my PH, the PHP I used, defining, uh, telling Drupal to, to use a minified version of JS if that exists in the directory rather than uh, a large uh, .js file, um, et cetera, yeah. So that's my last slide. Let's see, how did I do on time? Not bad. Um, it, does anyone have any other questions? Yeah, go ahead. Um, you mentioned earlier when you were talking about front, uh, the concurrent task, and I know there's, when you define like a custom task, you can do a like run, task, run, and provide an array. Yeah. Um, task run, is that different? Is there any benefit from doing one or the other, say, for running a ConnectJS and running your, your tests on, based on ConnectJS? You mean, are, are you talking about uh, with the parallel? No, with the concurrent. Oh, um, I think that's, uh, I, what I tend to do, and because it makes sense in my head, is do that uh, in, in order as far as dealing with my JS, because I would like it to be minified first, because with the uglification process, uh, you tend to find some uh, errors, uh, especially if you are changing function names and changing variable names. Um, so I like to have it build that out first and then run the tests. Did I understand your question correctly? Uh, I know you also use ConnectJS. Uh -huh. Yeah. I don't know. Like, it's, it's kind of finicky and with connected, like, like has to start it, like stops it. Yeah. Uh, can current task help out with those little issues. It could. Um, I honestly didn't haven't seen any negative repercussions uh, utilizing the connect, um, and. But I think that's a very valid point, and I should test it there. I haven't. So, um, yeah. I have a question. So, Paul Gold, you had a performance hit in SAS. That's Ruby SAS. What about LibSAS? Correct, Ruby SAS. That's an excellent point. LibSAS, I haven't been using because some of my libraries, like Singularity, hadn't, hadn't been taken over. Now, uh, Snugug is working on that now, and I don't know if he's actually released it yet, um, but as soon as he does, you can count on me switching over to LibSass. LibSass is more of a C-based compiler and is way faster. Um, but again, I have these dependencies that we lean on. We actually also lean on, uh, what, I always forget, is it Susie or Sussie? Susie. Okay, thank you. Um, 
And, and so like that, again, I'm, I don't know, I'm pretty sure they don't have a libsass uh, version of that out. So, you know, people are kind of slow at adopting, but you know, with the latest version of libsass, it's really gotten pretty awesome. Definitely worth check, checking out if you have the time. <laughs> Uh, all right, where the, I, I believe there's a question over here. Can you talk about source maps and whether you're using them and whether it's something you think about and it's just a plugin for that and Gulper for that? Um, I believe there's a, a grunt plugin. I don't know about Gulp. Um, I haven't really gone there yet uh, because I'm dealing more with maintenance things rather than fresh builds. I think if I were doing a fresh build, I would uh, definitely consider it. Uh, for per performance reasons. It's also one of those latest greatest things though. Uh, a lot of blogs and Twitter are talking about it. Um, so th that was source mapping, correct? Right. Uh, in case uh, someone didn't hear. Um, yeah, go ahead. Um, you mentioned a plugin that went into your contrib module directories and did some concatenation and notification. What plugin was that? Do you know the name of uh, the, uh, I don't know off the top of my head. I'm happy to look. Let's do that uh, rather than do it right now for everyone to see. Were there any other questions? Okay, cool. Yeah, um, I usually lead off with a joke. My memory isn't what it is. I suffer from, uh, uh, Oh shit, the reason why I took it out was I forget. <laughs> so you, I gotta laugh! Uh, no. <laughs> um, no, I have three kids at home, so. Uh, one just turned one yesterday, so, which is awesome, but um, she doesn't sleep, so that's why I suffer. Were there any other questions? All right, sweet.